Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at legendary mobster Joseph Armone, also known as Piney Armone. Piney was born and raised in New York City. He was the younger brother of mobster Stephen Armone, a forerunner of the Gambino crime family and an early member of the Mangano criminal family. With Josephine de Cordo, Armone got married and fathered two children. Dominic de Cordo, a captain in the Genovese crime family, is related to Josephine. He is also the uncle of Gambino crime family boss Joseph Joey the Blonde Giordano. Joseph Armone lived in Brooklyn with his family and was well known for his fierce devotion to his family. His moniker Piney was acquired in the 1930s when he coerced money from Christmas tree vendors. Armone joined his brother in joining the Mangano family. By 1951, when Albert Mad Hatter Anastasia assumed leadership of the Mangano family, Armone had risen to prominence as a key earner for the family. He was associated with Joseph Biondo, who managed the family's role in the heroin smuggling network known as the French Connection. In 1957, Biondo, the underboss, purportedly selected Armone and two other mob members to assassinate Anastasia. However, Armone was apprehended on drug charges before the planned attack and was incarcerated. Biondo then replaced Armone with his sibling Stephen, who, along with hired gunmen, carried out Anastasia's killing. Nevertheless, some sources propose that the responsibility for Anastasia's murder lies with Joe Gallo and his crew from the Profaci crime family. Following Stephen Armone's demise in 1960, Biondo designated Joseph Armone to supervise the Gambino family's heroin operations. According to the Federal Bureau of Narcotics, Armone frequented the 207 Second Avenue de Robertis Pasticaria and Lulu's Bar. Near East 14th Street and 1st Avenue, he was thought to be the boss of a drug gang. A French drug trafficker and the Guatemalan ambassador to Belgium and the Netherlands were both captured by the FBN in October 1960. On Lexington Avenue, they were apprehended while carrying 100 pounds of pure heroin to Nicholas Calamaris, a longshoreman connected to Armone. Another 100 pounds of heroin were taken in subsequent raids on numerous stash homes throughout New York City, making it the FBN's biggest heroin take at the time. Armone was apprehended after giving an informant instructions to set up a drug delivery to Calamaris on 116th Street. Additional French nationals who had spoken with Joe Biondo, the drug operations financier, regarding the cost of heroin were also identified by the FBN. These conversations happened at Biondo's vacation home in Long Beach, Long Island. The FBN was unable to ascertain who was providing the organization with funding, though. After refusing to provide Biondo's identify, Armone was ultimately detained on drug-related charges. Armone narrowly avoided an attempted murder in January 1964. He was shot five times at extremely close range by a shooter while he was at the Reno Club in Manhattan. The Federal Bureau of Investigation reported that during Armone's three-month rehabilitation at Columbus Hospital, Biondo paid him frequent visits. The French Connection case led to Armone's indictment on October 1, 1964, along with 11 other mob figures. Between 1956 and 1965, they are alleged to have organized the passage of $20 million worth of heroin from France to the U.S. via a network of narcotics couriers that included business people, diplomats, sailors, and even sailors. A friend of Armone's and former Playboy bunny Patricia D'Alessandro approached a juror outside the courthouse during the trial proceedings. The juror refused D'Alessandro's offer to pay, and the juror immediately alerted the authorities about the occurrence. Subsequently, D'Alessandro was convicted guilty of bribery and given the five-year prison term. Armone was found guilty of the allegations brought against him in the French Connection case on June 22, 1965. In July 1965, he was given a sentence of 15 years in jail. Armone spent 10 years in prison before being freed. Armone was promoted to captain when mobster Paul Castellano took over as the family's head. But the American Mafia sometimes ignores its formal ban on engaging in narcotics trafficking. Joe Piney Armone was unable to take part in the 1957 murder of Albert Anastasia because of his earlier drug arrest. But in order to take control of the Gambino crime organization, he worked with fellow Gambino captain John Gotti in 1985 to plan the murder of boss Paul Castellano. For any Gambino family member implicated in narcotics trafficking, a criminal activity that both Armone and Gotti's teams were heavily involved in, Castellano had implemented the death penalty. Armone and Gotti became interested in removing Paul Castellano from the family's leadership as a result of their joint involvement in the drug trade. Gene Gotti, also John Gotti's brother, ex-heroin distributor, was arrested in 1983 for his role in managing a massive, multi-million dollar heroin distribution network. Paul Castellano told John Gotti that he had decided to disband Gotti's gang at this point. Gotti responded by enlisting the aid of Joe Piney Armone, a highly regarded senior member of the Gambino family, in an effort to persuade the other captains to side with Gotti in opposition to Castellano. In 1986, after Paul Castellano was killed in front of Sparks Steakhouse, 
John Gotti became the head of the Gambino criminal family. Armon was promoted to underboss as part of Gotti's leadership reshuffle, and he was given charge of managing Gambino family operations in Florida. The Gambino crime family's demise was eventually caused by John Gotti's ascent to power, which was marked by his egotism and lack of discipline, according to both law enforcement officers and experts on mafia history. Joseph Piney Armon, who was 70 years old at the time and was charged with racketeering, which included extortion and bribery, was found guilty in Brooklyn Federal Court on December 22, 1987. One of the allegations came from a scheme in 1981-1982, in which he planned to pay a government representative to move Joseph N. Gallo, the son of Gambino family consigliere, from a New York State jail to a federal one. Armon asked federal judge Jack Weinstein for permission to spend Christmas with his wife after being found guilty. He promised to return for his sentencing, the judge received that assurance. However, the judge imposed a requirement for Armon's provisional release. He had to formally renounce his Mafia membership and consent to refrain from associating or communicating with a list of other Mafia members. Armon declined the judge's terms and made the decision to uphold his Cosa Nostra pledge. He was thus given a 15-year prison term. Despite his plea, Joe Piney Armon was in prison for the rest of his life, including that Christmas. He passed dead while he was still incarcerated in February 1992. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more character breakdowns and analysis of your favorite gangsters. See you in the next one!